Guitarlessons365.com. Got another massive hit today. We're going to learn how to do Animal by the great Def Leppard. So uh, a lot of times I don't do, even though Def Leppard is probably my favorite 80s band. Uh, uh, just I think they've done so much uh, incredible stuff. Um, I, it's hard to get their music done in like a tutorial because it's there is literally just so many guitar layers going on. And you really, what you have to do is kind of reference what they do live, because they're a great live band. They have a way of kind of getting all this stuff kind of working live. Um, but obviously they can't do everything uh, because there's so many like little recording studio kind of overdubs and all that stuff going on. Um, so what I'm gonna be doing with this one is kind of taking the album version and kind of combining it with their in the round version or live version they did in 1988. So. Um, I'm kind of going back and forth, so I'm kind of be showing two parts for each section. Steve Clark's, Phil Collins, and and then um, uh, you're not going to hear everything that's on the album. Let's just say that. All right, now before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, uh, just it really helps. <laughs> and uh, you know, like and comment on the videos. The like it really help if you, if you like the video. It, does, it takes a second and it helps you know, YouTube send it out to more people. Um, and if you really want to support what I do here on YouTube. Number one way to do it is join my Guitar Academy, my online guitar school, and you're going to see a link to that in the description below. Uh, that school contains all my courses, from complete courses for beginners to more advanced courses of technique, improvisation, ear training, and theory. Um, and I go live there every weekend with just uh, to chat with Academy members and they can ask me questions, um, like a live video chat. So it's a lot of fun. Hopefully you come join us. All right, I'll see you there. Let's jump into the track. I'm in standard tuning here. Um, and we have this intro, which has, uh, now this is like one of those things too, that you really kind of, you can listen to the album and see, kind of see what's going on. Um, but then you can see what they do live. So this one, we have this intro where Phil Collins doing, but underneath that, we have Steve Clark doing the, So he's, it's obviously a lot lighter guitar tone on the recording, but on the live version, he's beefing it up kind of like I'm doing here, so it's more fun, so I'm going to do that. Um, so what he's doing, you can hear a, a lot better live, is he's just taking this B-flat power chord right? So off the first fret of the A-string power chord, then taking it to the C power chord at the third fret. Then he comes to these double stops. So that's the fifth fret there on the G and the sixth fret there on the B. So you play that together first and then just play the fifth fret across the B and the G and then back to the previous chord. So we have this. And then we kind of do it again. It's a little bit different. He just starts with that six and then moves it down to the fifth fret and just holds it there. So this is going on underneath the intro under Phil Collins. That part, which we'll do in a second. So all together. Repeat. And that takes us to the verse. 
So that's what Steve's doing, and then Phil's doing this. All right, so that's gonna start here on the 10th fret there on the B. And it goes back to the 10th fret on the D, palm muted. Like that. So we have the hit the note once on the B, and then that 10th fret twice on the D. So it's kind of that one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one. Then we just move the melody note up a fret to the 11th fret there on the B string. Keep this here. So just do that once, and then, and then come back down to the 10th fret, and he does a half step bend up to that note. So we have this. All right, and then the next one, So that's the 11th fret here on the B string. I'm gonna play it with these fingers now. Got the 11th fret there on the B, 10th on the D still. So we do that same picking pattern. And then we move to the, the 13th fret there on the B. Come back and hit this twice, just like we, we, we did before. And then now we're gonna bend from the 11th fret up a whole step on that B string. And we're gonna end it with this uh, C octave. So we have the 10th fret there on the D string, 13th fret there on the, uh, on the B string. I'll just kinda sum that a little bit. So all together. All right, so now with the verse section, once uh, we have a clear defined part by Steve Clark and then Phil Call. Now, um, you can do it like they did the, the live version where Steve Clark is kind of once again using kind of a beefed up guitar tone. Which I prefer, but um, you can get closer to the album by just using a clean tone. By the way, I'm not trying to dial in the album tones here. I'm nowhere close to the album tones. It's just kind of an approximation. Uh, not a tone lesson. So um, very hard to get it to sound exactly like they've been doing. They actually recorded their clean parts, like their clean guitar stabs, which we're going to talk about in a second, one note at a time, and then layered them. Yeah. So that's uh, not something I have time to go through. So let's start here with what Steve's doing. I'm going to crank it up because I like it a little bit more aggressive. So he's kind of doing those double stops we did earlier. So just play the fifth bar, of the fifth fret across the G and the B. So this is the Steve's part in the verse. So across the B and the G, and then you have the sixth fret there on the B. So you just kind of go back and forth between those. Kind of just picking up and just going from six to five on the B string, keeping that five on the G under it. He's kind of palm muting that low G as well. So you see I'm kind of hitting the chords and then coming back and just hitting the G string. And then it goes up to the eighth fret. And then it just kind of does a melody on the, the B string, eight, six, five, six, and back to five. So kind of, that's like the second half of it. All right, now live, um, Phil usually just does some uh, harmonics, some random harmonics or something like that on the 
on the album, he's doing more kind of chord stabs, the first half of it, and then he goes into this single note riff, uh, which he also does a lot. So um, now, so Steve does what I was just doing throughout the whole verse, and then uh, we have Phil doing this, if so this is kind of the album version. <laughs> So he, play, he plays that part. It's really heavily palm muted and more subdued on the album, but live, once again, he kind of lets that thing crank a little bit. So now those chord stabs that are going on, lots of, you know, layers, just these things were recorded one note at a time, not actually playing the whole chord, but it starts with just a B major. Triad, so it's just a, it's just a third fret of the D, G, and the B. Kind of sounds good sometimes to have the open D in there. Or just those two strings, the third fret on the G and the B together. Because you can hear this note, but like I said, since they recorded each note separately, they really lowered this one in the mix quite a bit. So you can actually play this whole chord, play uh, like a D here, because there's a D note in there as well. So if you kind of wanted to get all the notes in there, do it like that, which is barring across that third fret and then holding the fifth fret there on the A. So that rings for a little bit. Um, like I said, Steve Clark's still doing his part. And then we come in with this, this F major triad, which is just the fifth fret there on the G, sixth on the B, and fifth on the high E. He hits that a couple times. And then a little bit later, right before we go to the riff, we have this uh, open G, the third fret across the B and the high E. That's kind of on the upbeat, and that comes in right before the riff. And then, so the second half of the verse, you'll see this riff enter, and um, Phil plays it. And it's more kind of palm muted and subdued on the recording. Um, but this is kind of how they do it live here, a little bit more beefed up. <laughs> All right, so that starts on the first fret. It's heavily palm muted. The first fret on the, the A string, then the open D, and then the seventh fret there on the I'm sorry, seventh fret, third fret on the D string. So you basically do those three notes twice. And then we have this. So that's the first ending. We're gonna play this riff basically four times. And so the first, so the riff itself is, you're always gonna have that to start it. And then the ending is always changing. So the first ending. That's going to be open D, then two, three on the D, then the open G string twice, and then back to the, the third fret there on the D. So it is. All right, and now we're going to do the same riff again, but a little bit of different ending. So that was this the same, but now the second ending, which is just zero, two, three on the D, uh, open G, and then back to two, three on the D. So all together, both uh, the riff played twice with both endings. Now the third time through the riff, the ending is the same as the first time. So nothing new there. And 
And then we have the fourth ending, which is a little bit different. So same beginning. And then this new ending, this last ending, is 0, 2 on the D, open G, and then 3, 2, 3 on the D. So all together, all four parts. Now we get to the, the pre-chorus. So Steve Clark's part first. It's a B power chord, to F sharp power chord, to C sharp power chord. So it's just like. <laughs> so it just says the power chord off the uh, second fret of the A to this off the second fret of the low E now, that power chord, F sharp, and then the C sharp power chord that's off the fifth of the fourth fret of the A string. You hold that one twice as long. Now Phil is doing uh, a cool little riff over it. Looks like this. So that's going to start here at the 4th fret on the G, and then go over to the 7. Uh, so the, the note that's happening on the, uh, they're actually kind of both a little bit palm muted. So 4 on the, on the uh, G string to 7 on the B. Back to 4 on the G, then 6 on the B, back to 4 on the G, and then 7 on the B. So that's the, the first little melodic line. Then what you're going to do is just come up here to the 6th fret, cross the B and the G so you can bar that. And you're going to do the same, same pattern, but now you're going to be 6 on the G, 7 on the B, back to 6 on the G, then 6 on the B. So that's kind of instead of going right, what's the, up here. So, so you keep going back and hitting that G in between each one. And then we're going to stay here at the 6th fret there on the G, but the melody on top is going to be 9, 7, 9 on the B. Remember, between each melody note, you're coming back and hitting that note on the G string. And then we have this, which is going to be the 6th fret there across the B and the G. Kind of strum and let the ring out. And then six on the G, seven on the B, let that ring out, and then nine on the B, six on the G. So we have this. Repeat. All right, then we have the chorus. Uh, so Steve's part, once again, he's playing power chords underneath it. Looks like this. So that starts with this F sharp power chord off the second fret of the low E. And then he's basically going through just F sharp to E, E power chord to the B power chord to the second fret of the A, to the open A power chord. So those are the chords he's going to, but between each chord he puts this little, this quick little move in there, which is that B power chord off the second fret of the A string. 
and slide it up two frets of the C sharp. So he's gonna start with that F, the F sharp, I'm sorry. Then we're gonna play that slide from the B to the C sharp and then go to the open E power chord. Then once again, do that B to slide to C sharp power chord. Then we're to the B power chord. So remember, this is just F sharp, E, B, A. So now we're at the third chord, really, of the chorus. Play the B power chord off the second fret of the A string. Then once again, from there, do that slide up to the C sharp. And then the A power chord. Open A power chord. And then we're gonna go that slide again to start back over with the F sharp. So it Start over. So second time through, uh, obviously at the chorus at the end of the song, they just kind of keep going longer and longer with this, but it goes, it just does that slide and stops on the A there um, for the first chorus there. So that's what Steve's doing. Then Phil on top of that is just doing this very simple little thing. So that's just playing the ninth fret on the high E and the seventh fret on the B, which is whatever fingers you want. I'm kind of muting with the index finger behind it, just in case like, anything else rings. So I pick the high E string, then the B, and then back to the high E. Let them ring, and a little bit of uh, kind of vibrato bar on it. And just do that over and over again. He just hits the open A string at the very end of the chorus and just do a bar dive down. All right, so now for the second verse, you can pretty much play what we did in the first verse, even though on the original recording, it's a, what Phil's doing at least is a little bit different, a little bit different, um, you know, chords over, I mean, not really chord steps. I mean, live, like he says, he just kind of creates a lot of harmonics and just do some bar dives and stuff like that waiting to get to the second half of the verse is when he comes in with that single note riff. So I was just gonna give you an option. You can do that, so basically the same way we did the Steve, what he plays is the same. So it's the same as the first verse. Uh, but when we get to the second half of that second verse, uh, we have that line going. Um, so we, you can continue doing that, or optional choice, you can do this, which they add on top of it. kind of like the chorus thing we did, but just down a fret. That's going on over that. So you, uh, you have to choose which one you want to do because you still need somebody still doing that kind of thing underneath it. But I was just going to let you know that that's there. It's pretty, pretty prominent in the mix. It sounds cool. So you can choose which one you do. If you have three guitar players, you can do all of them, I guess. Um, but other than that, it's just kind of treated the same as the first verse. Then we have the pre-chorus, same as the first, and then the same chorus. Um, and then we get to that bridge section. So really it's Steve that's playing this riff uh, in the bridge. And especially for live playing and stuff, there's just a bunch of random like harmonics. You know, kind of, you got to... It's, it's, creating basically kind of random uh, noise. He's not really trying to do anything until his solo comes in. It's really Steve that's doing the riff, which is this. All right, and then the solo comes in. So pretty simple though. It's, Open A string, then two, three on the low E string. Let's play this. Then hit that note on the third fret again. So we have again. And then we 
have this. So that's just three on the low E to five on the A. Sometimes you hit that with a harmonic. A little pinch harmonic on that. Note. Then the open E a couple times and then again. So that C spark for the bridge again. Now, over the very end of the bridge, we have the solo starts. Um, we have the solo starts. That doesn't make a lot of sense. The solo does start over the very end of the bridge. Um, now, the solo is going to be going over uh, the same riff that... Um that Steve played in the intro. So you can just do that underneath the solo. Now, let me play through the solo, um, and then I'll show you how to play a note for note. So here we go. So that's going to start with uh, a bend. Well, he starts doing a series of bends, starting at the seventh fret on the G string. You can just pick it and bend up, and then slide up a fret. You just go chromatically up the string, up a fret at a time. So it's starting at the seven on the G, then up at the eighth, ninth, ten. So you just go until you got to get to that note to start the actual solo. So I kind of got to the 17th fret there, the octave of this. And then we're here um, to actually start the, the main melody. So we're going to start that like this. So that starts with a bend at the 5th fret on the G. And then bend it again. And then release and pick it without the band. So, and then shift up to the seventh fret. And then I'm gonna bend that up. Then seven, five twice. Kind of staccato feeling in a lot of this. Now the second time he doesn't bend the note, he slides into it. So that's sliding into the seventh fret on G. Hit that a few times. Then back to five, seven, slide into nine with some vibrato. So we have this so far. All right, then we start the kind of the bend version of the melody again. But when we jump up, shift up here to the seventh fret there, we don't bend that note. We come over to the B string and play a, a, a bend at the eighth fret, and then play eight, six, five. And then we're going to end the solo. So that's going to be. Sliding into that seventh fret there on the G, play that a few times, then play five, seven, and then come over here and grab the, the harmonic off the fifth fret of the high E string. And then let's do a bar dive on it. And that would be it. So it's um it's a kind of a interesting, it's a pretty melodic solo, and it's just got, it just works perfectly. It's just, uh, it's got some very odd stuff in it, but um, very musical, it's pretty cool. Um, and then it just goes back into the same pre-chorus again, and then the same chorus, except it's just kind of longer. They keep stopping and bringing it back. But um, yeah, so that's all it is, just kind of repeating the same chorus stuff that we did before. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's, um, it's a pretty simple song to play, but like I said, to get it, Sounding exactly like the recording is 
it's pretty much impossible just the way their albums are recorded with Mutt Lang. It's very highly produced, and uh, but they do a really good job of recreating it live, uh, like on the In the Round back in the 88. You can check out that video. Um, and that's going to be a, a pretty good representation of what a lot of things you're learning here. Uh, don't look at like Top of the Pops. That is not them. They're miming that, which I'm sure they hate doing because they're a great live band, but the TV show, doesn't. they don't let you play live. So that's the studio recording that they're actually miming to, and that's not actual live thing. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.